Hi guys, Travis here again at Perth Diesel Performance. Today we're going to go through dual battery trays in your 2017 Land Cruiser and also fits the earlier model Land Cruisers. Um, we've designed this kit as a direct bolt-in so you don't need to drill any holes apart from the base plate holes it picks up on your factory holes here. We've also allowed for extra mounting brackets on here for your Unichip relays, other accessories. In the kit you're going to get your dual battery tray um, your top bracket, all your nut and bolt kit, washers, nylock nuts, their M8 bolts for, to hold your battery down. Um, some of the other kits we see have quite thin materials in them. Um, everything's metric as well, the Toyota's all metric. Once again, all our stuff, it's pretty standard across all our kits. Um, and we'll go through how to fit it and um, get it in your car. So once you've got the car, you've got your kit and you've checked all the componentry. So the first thing that we need to remove is the injector driver units which is all mounted here. So obviously you need to turn your car off, disconnect the battery, then remove the injector drivers from the vehicle. We'll unbolt them from the back bracketry. Uh, some of your wiring harness as well. Take your trim clips out in there um, and then we'll mount these up to the tray which we have got provisions for on the back, along the back of the tray, so we'll, we'll do that. So we've got a 10mm quarter drive socket, a 300mm long extension and a quarter drive ratchet. Um, we've got the ignition off, the battery's disconnected now. Uh, we can undo the 10mm little M6 bolts to hold the injector drivers in place. First one is down here. The second one will be over here. Also the third bolt is here, so undo that one. We've removed the drivers, we've gone to the workbench, we put the drivers on the battery tray. Now we're going to come back to the car. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to install, this is the best time to install the wire that's going to run through the firewall to your battery link solenoid, momentarily switch inside the vehicle, so we've, we've snipped this grommet to run a cable through. Um, obviously we're going to run a twin core through there. If you're going to install other stuff at the same time, it's a great time to run all your cables through at once. So keep that in mind. We've got the wire that we're going to feed through the firewall. Um, how I like to do it is obviously just a bit of insulation tape. I've got a wire I've, I've used for a long time. It's just a bit of stainless steel with a blunt end on it. So you're not going to poke through and pierce any other wires. Um, we'll tape the two together. We're just going to come in here. It's hard to see, but what we're going to do is we're going to feed this through into the cab, like so. So we are, just bear in mind that the grommets in the firewalls are dual grommets. There's a grommet each side. So you want to make sure the hole we poke through on the outside lines up with the hole on the inside. You're not piercing and ending up poking the end of this into wiring harnesses or using drills or drill bits. That's where we see a lot of people go wrong. So here we go, we're just going to pull it gently. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag a bit more cable through to there. I find is a perfect length to run up to the centre console for where I'm going to locate the switch. So we've got that through. We're going to leave that. We'll go back into the engine bay and we'll finish off the install in there. Right, so we've got the install kit. We haven't opened that yet. So we're going to cut that open. Um, all the contents. We've made sure we've got all our fixings to mount it and get everything together. Um, what we've done here is we've pulled the drivers apart. Uh, eight mil socket, quarter drive, or you can sit there with the spanner and undo them. Undo the injector drivers off the driver brackets. Once we've got them, you'll see there's two sets of holes on the back of the battery tray. Um, this tray we've designed it so it fits the, the, the facelift 70 series and the early 70 series. If you've opted for one of our full DIY battery kits, this is a good time to fit the Red Arc SBI solenoid. When you do install it, make sure that the earth here comes around to the battery tray. You've got two 10 mils, nuts and bolts, that'll hold that in, in, in situ. Um, if you want to just assemble it to start with, just to make sure when we put it in the car, you, this bracket is slotted, you can move it and flip the SBI solenoid around depending on wiring and what's in your car to make it work, but we'll go to the car and I'll show you that on the vehicle. This is where a little bit of juggling with the wiring, and just making sure everything is nice, it's relaxed where it wants to sit, you're not stressing any wiring or you're not pushing on anything, you, you know, you shouldn't be having an argument with anything down here and to just slip into place. So the first time around, 
you might not go in straight, but as you, you know, you see where things need to mount, that's where it wants to sit where it's, it's relaxed and you're not trying to push and pull on things. So literally, the train What you're looking for is these two mounting points on the side and then what we'll do is we'll get the two shorter M8 bolts and we'll bolt them into the guard or just start them loosely. We'll make sure it's all touching the floor, the inner guard nicely, it's not on one angle or anything like that before you go marking or drilling any holes. You'll see once you've got these bolts just started in here, don't want to tighten them up with a spanner, as is the tray, you can see the, the, the tray will actually go up and down. The reason that is is so we can move it up and down the guard to the inner guard can always be slightly different from car to car. So what we want to do is the base, the weight of the battery is actually in the tray. So we want the legs in the tray to be on the inner guard. So that's why we've slotted that. So leave them loose. You're going to come in here. So this is where what we do is have put your hand in here, have a look at the wiring, make sure you're happy where everything's sitting because the next step is to mark and drill the holes through the guard and that's going to be the sitting position of the tray. So the, the, where the mounting pole bolts go through the inner guard you want to make sure that they're, they're it's relaxed and it's the, it's actually firmly touching down so and you're not sitting any wiring because the last thing you'll do is drill more holes in your car that, because you haven't aligned it properly. From a marker we're going to mark the four locations that we're happy with in through here in through here and then what we're going to do is we're going to pop the batch of tray out drill the holes and then we'll do the final installation. The next step, once the tray goes back in next time, the tray stays in. So we don't want to do things twice. Put it back on the workbench, come over to the car where we've marked the holes that we need to drill through the bodywork. Um, we've got a pilot drill bit. So we're gonna drill four holes. Just make sure on the other side, what you're drilling through, that you're not, if you've got aftermarket shockies, hoses, wires, there's not something mounted in there. Obviously factory there isn't, but if you've got other accessories just be mindful of that when you're drilling through. Once you've done your pilot hole, eight and a half, a clearance hole, we are mounting it with an M8, so eight and a half. If you want to go nine mil, that's fine. We do have big washers. So once again, drill through your larger size drill bit. Once that's done, um, I'd prefer, or that's how we like to do it, is use a zinc rich primer, deburr the holes, zinc rich primer, let that dry, um, and then do your battery tray, come back, and then reinstall it. Previously, we did drag the twin core wire through into the cab for the momentary start switch. So we've got this loom here, we're just gonna push it to the side and we'll connect it up to the SBI solenoid once the tray's in situ, or yeah, depending on which way you wanna do it yourself, whichever, whichever works for yourself. Mark drilled the holes, we've got the drivers onto the battery tray. Another tip that I do want to show you is, as you can see with the injector drivers, we have a three connector and a four connector. What you want to make sure is when the car sits, when the tray puts, goes back in that way, that the looms, you're trying to connect them to each the correct drivers, otherwise if you need to swap them back around, they will swap over on the tray to get it to fit the way you've got the loom sitting. So now we'll plot the harness in and we'll get it all into position and we'll bolt it in. So we've maneuvered the battery tray into position. We've lined up the holes. Uh, what we've done is obviously started these bolts here loosely. We have put the earth strap onto here. So obviously when you bolt the tray and secure it, you can put your earth onto your battery terminal. So you've got two M8s at the front, two M8s at the rear and two M8s onto the sides. They're all metric headed bolts as well. Also, once the tray's in or when you're putting it in, you can secure your solenoid for your battery link and you can leave the cables out of the way. That's all pre-terminated. All your wiring's been ran into the cab how we had it before. Um, so we can now put some zip ties and tie him out of the way. Um, yeah, well now we'll put the battery in, put our J hooks in and clamp it all down. If you've gone for the full battery Installation kit, which will come with the Red Arc BCDC with the solar ready. It's all terminated, bolted on there. All your fuses are on here. And then obviously these cables here to program the BCDC so we can give you a battery profile. Pretty much what we do, it's all, all assembled as is. We'll come over to the vehicle. There's a little cavity through here. So we're just gonna feed 
the cables through, fuse holders, everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to undo the 12 mils here. The loom through, up onto the engine. Sneak the BCDC into place. Just make sure obviously when you're starting all your threads that you're happy finger tight before you go doing them up tight with the ratchet. Obviously this top piece does move on the radiator apron. Um, secure your wiring. The bracket all bolts into position. This tab here is if you had the earlier BCDC that needed the solar relay. Um, you can mount the relay onto here and your Anderson plug here is for, your, is for your solar blanket or panel, whichever you want. Just make sure your cables are, you know, it's nice, it's not going to rub. Obviously, we use a full loom heat shrink with a resin in it, so it's very robust. Um, it's all secured nicely, so that's fine there. So we'll come around the other side now and we'll run the cables over to the battery. We've got the late Land Cruiser or the early Land Cruiser. We've got both models covered. Earlier Land Cruiser will keep the fuse holder in our loom, which you'll see here. So the fuse is in there under those two nylock nuts. That'll bolt, line it up, drill two holes, nut and bolt it onto your fuse cover. This will come directly onto your battery terminal here because you will not have this fuse block here. With the, the newer style Land Cruisers, you're obviously going to have a, a fuse distribution block on top of your terminal. So what we'll do there is we'll undo this, eight mil here, and we'll go direct onto the battery. We, will, we, won't require, um, we won't require this fuse. So obviously you can use this somewhere else in the car, but the kit will come for both. It just depends on obviously what you want to use it for. If you've got the later model with a fuse distribution block on there, what we're saying to you is remove the 60 amp hour fuse and replace it with the 40 amp hour fuse that comes in this fuse block. Because with the BCDC 1225, they require a 40 amp fuse. And if you're running a BCDC 1240 or 1240D, you'll need a, a 60, which you can use that fuse. But our preferred choice is a 25, depending on the needs of the vehicle. So now we'll come up. Obviously, you can see I've got an extra set of hands here. This stud from underneath, if you undo it, it can drop down. Um, so we're at the point where we're really literally going to put the battery into the vehicle. So what we just want to run through, the second fuse holder will sit and bolt onto your battery carrier. Uh, so around the other way. We'll come and it'll bolt onto there and it'll sit nicely along here, which we'll show you on another car. This here will come around onto your positive terminal. So, and then, so that'll be the BCDC power supply circuit. The shorter lead here obviously will go to the positive inside the battery tray. We have made the battery tray and the wiring configuration with the positive to be at the rear. And then obviously the front loom, how that'll come along. Every car may be a little bit different. That's one thing I want to say. Obviously, each car, when you're wiring something, it will depend on the other accessories you've got in there. So we would say to someone, use common sense. Tie things away from heat, rub. So that obviously, if the engine's moving and it stays on the engine, it stays with the engine. If it's part of the bodywork, it stays with the bodywork. Don't tie things that are moving to things that aren't moving. Um, and then obviously, this positive up here is going to come straight on. You can turn this around, pull this fuse block off, pop him straight underneath of this 12 mil, get a nice good termination onto your main battery. Then the same thing with your earth point here, we've used it onto the body earth. That'll come around here, straight onto your battery earth. Two J hooks, nylock nuts, washers. They just clip into your battery tray. And then obviously they're gonna hold the battery down. Sometimes it might be an idea, a little trick is to put this one in, a little bit of masking tape, insulation tape, just so when you put the battery in, you're not trying to fight with it and this falls down the side and you're trying to get it back up. Same thing with this. Look, another little tip, you may need to maneuver the, maneuver the air conditioning hose, this mount, just a little bit, not much. It just depends obviously on the installation and 
that is an aftermarket, so to say, on these cars that don't come factory, so they can be all slightly different to one another. Um, but that's one thing, just keep an eye on. I mean, look, once again, you use a bit of common sense when you're installing it. Make sure that you're not going to have things that are going to rub through or you're not fitting something that's going to cause problems. So that's what I say, when you tie it back, you may have to fit something twice, but just make sure you're happy with it when you leave it in the vehicle. So then you'll have no problems when you're out on the tracks. So we're at another car that we've already previously done. It was, we can show you obviously the batteries installed. As I was saying, the, the fuse holder that runs the BCDC is mounted here, comes around on your positive terminal. Battery's got your two J hooks, your little M6 bolt here that ties this back to it. This car's obviously been fitted out with, you know, winches, the battery isolation, the catch cans, fuel manager, all the other things we do as well. As you can see, it's a nice, clean, finished, tidy finish, and you can see where everything is, and it's well accessorised, um, but it's still nice and neat. Fuses here, here. Uh, your battery link fuses down the bottom, down the back here, which you, any of this stuff you really shouldn't have any dramas with. If you do, it's mainly because someone's put battery terminals around the wrong way. You should never really actually have any problems with that sort of stuff. So, okay guys, so inside the cab, what we've done here is we put a battery link switch. If you turn your park lights on, you, you, the light illuminates. So in the dark at night, obviously you can see where the switch is. When you hit the link battery momentary, you can see it joining. So in the event of a flat battery, you can hold this down with your left hand. Use your right hand on, the, on your key switch, on your ignition barrel, start the car. The problem we see a lot of guys, if they do have this option, it is on this option here, is on the right hand side. So now you're trying to hold the switch down over here and then crank the vehicle. The other thing we see is it isn't a momentary switch. Problem with it not being a momentary switch is you accidentally leave it on. You drain your batteries, you're having a bit of a party, fridge is running, you wake up in the morning, oh, I've got dual batteries, the car will start well, you didn't realise I had it linked in and now your batteries are flat. So it's a bit of a get out of jail card. Guys, thanks for watching the video. If you think this kit's for you and you're after that, you can find this on our online store. It's www.perthdieselperformance.com.au on our website, um, or alternatively, you can shoot us an email. Um, once again, I do say the kit does come with a full uh, comprehensive instructions and our support with our products as well. So we've tried to put together a quite a comprehensive battery kit design of customers feedbacks what we see is being done wrong um, and how we can help you guys get the ultimate setup into your new Land Cruiser. Thanks guys.